going to tie this together with some of the statements we've made before. If that's a, the real issue or one of the real issues, then and the portrayal of uh, racial stereotypes, uh, either in popular media or online, or so, is, is is reinforcing this. Then, uh, to what extent are we reinforcing stereotypes by having racist jokes or race-based jokes? I would say that. Um, at the root of it is a human problem in the sense that mm. the world is so complex and diverse, but our human mind is wired to simplify things, and therefore the tendency to essentialize, to reduce uh, groups of people into a certain stereotypical characteristics. Uh, that is the root of the problem of how we are wired to think about the world around us. Uh, and that's how stereotypes develop about people whom we are not connected with, whom we have very little knowledge. Sometimes maybe we've been living in our own silos, of our own racial category, and that actually reinforces the stereotypes because there is very little interaction to actually humanize our experience of uh, the diversity within another set of category. Mm. Uh, so if, for example, I'm a Chinese and I've not met um, many Malays or many Indians, my ideas of what the Malays are or the Indians are will be filtered through either what my family has taught me from young or what the books have said or what the media have been representing this category of people. But the moment I have more interactions, more diverse uh, meetings with people of another race, then I begin to see, oh, you know, this stereotype Malays are lazy is not true because they are hardworking Malays and they are lazy Malays. Just like if I were to be also reflective of my own race, I will also recognize that uh, there are stereotypes also that are not true. They are lazy Chinese, they are hardworking Chinese. So it humanizes everyone. So the more interaction, the more we can break out of our silos and get to know each other and build those bridges. I think that's one way to overcome the stereotypes and the biases and prejudices. And that's not the end of the story. Once we are aware of that situation, then we have a role to actually call out against people who make stereotypical comments that uh, may be harmful, you know? Because my uh, concern is when these stereotypes have real impact on the lives of people. For example, if someone truly believes that a category of people is lazy, that might impact in employment, for example. Do you think we would lose something if we completely avoided race, uh, uh, racial jokes and racial stereotypes? Is, is, is there a certain cultural richness that we enjoy because we get to tell these jokes or we get to enjoy these jokes? I think we're not going to be ourselves if, if we lose this completely. So I think uh, we just have to know where to draw the line. And if, if in the unfortunate incident we do offend that someone by telling that joke, then you have to go all out to apologize to that person, do a lot of soul searching and know what's not correct to say. I also want to say, because Imran was talking about silos, right? Within silos of a race, we have our own strata of how we label the people within our race as well. So, you know, within the Eurasians, we, we laugh at ourselves also. We, we, we joke about ourselves and say, hey, you know, you Eurasian mama's boy, or, you know, this, this Eurasian girl is a chili party. And, and you know, first, for, it is true. A lot of Eurasian <laughs> girls are chili parties. But, um, uh, but, and, but you see, but we laugh about it and we have fun. And, yeah. and other, other races come to us and say, hey, you're like that and you're like that. And, I mean, I can say that for us, we, we can laugh it off because we see the humor in it. And I think humor is very, very important. But I just feel right, you know, at this day and age, people are too sensitive. Um, I just feel we take offense at everything and anything. And we have, we're living in a country whereby, you know, you, you see people of different races and religion. There's absolutely no way that you can avoid one of them. Uh, we just have to take it by stride and, you know, take it light. You know, you, every, everything doesn't have to be put on social media. Everything doesn't have to be blown out of proportion. You That's know, right. it's, it's just that uh, I just feel that, you know, in this information age, uh, people just want to share things. You know, sometimes the way they share it, you know, might not be the sort of, you know, the people receiving it might not interpret the same way as, the, you know, the, the intent of why they're sharing it. One thing I want to add is a joke should, nev should never be at the expense of someone. Yeah. It should never, I mean, something that is serious enough should never be made a joke of. For example, you can make a joke of someone who has been murdered or someone who, you know, like what Charlie Hebdo did yeah, Charlie to, to the child, That's right. the refugee child who drowned and they satired. Um, yeah. Those, I think, is where you cross the line. Uh, so, but uh, a racial joke can be a form of satire to also make us reflect on our own prejudices, stereotypes. So that can be useful. But never to laugh at someone, especially when the power dynamics is there, and you are actually laughing down at the person. So that is actually 
very dangerous in, in, in social relations. I would so certainly be very sad if Russell Peters stopped telling <laughs> <laughs> racial jokes. Exactly. They're not racial. I mean, they're not racial, racial jokes. They're not racist jokes. I suppose. Right. I mean, there's some, Blind, you know, yeah. gray between one and the other. Um, I laugh my head off when he makes fun of Chinese people. <laughs> you know, I, I, it might, might not be wholly accurate. They might be gross stereotypes, but I still can't help myself. It's just, it's just funny. funny. I'm Chinese. Do I know anyone who actually speaks like that? Uh, actually, no. But is it funny? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. I guess, you know, it's just context. It's, it's actually very personal. It's very subjective. You know, somebody else might be outraged at, at that he's you know, has the audacity to, to, to portray a Chinese person that way. So really, you really can't, you, you know, somebody's bound to be out there waiting to take offense, I suppose. You just can't tell. Um, it's, in, it's an imperfect world. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you all very much. I, I, I personally, I have quite a lot of hope. I think uh, if we see this as a, as a singular, singular problem to be solved, I think I, I would take your view that it's not a solvable not problem. Solved. But I think if it's something that we can see that there's a, there's a way to progress and, right. and, and have a bit more confidence at how we individually make those decisions, we individually bring up our kids, mm. we individually laugh at jokes and, and tell jokes. I mean, one example that I think that gives us quite a lot of hope is what we have done with gender. And, and you know, if, if I look at my upbringing, actually it was quite okay when I was a little kid in the playground to make jokes about girls. And, and you know, you, as you became a teenager, and you know, over time you learned about what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. And yet, you know, uh, in terms of uh, employment, education opportunity and everything, we've now closed that gender gap very significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are comedians that still get away with telling gender-based jokes, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, so I think we can navigate that space. It's just, we, as all of you have pointed out, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We've got to be a bit more uh, aware of what we're saying and a little bit more aware of how quick we are to take offense. I, I think we can, we can deal with this, perhaps not solve it, but deal with it over time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank that you. was a Thank you. very, very good session.